people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. I have received so many comments on my previous video, which was about November witchcraft, concerning the great American beast of Thanksgiving. And on reading through these comments, it became immediately obvious that the only thing I can do with them is to make them into this video on a pagan Thanksgiving. Now I'm a Brit and I know pretty much nothing about Thanksgiving so I've had to do quite a lot of research onto this video and the bare bones of it as I'm sure you're all aware but I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs I'm just going to say that in the 1600s the Pilgrim Fathers came over and settled with the help of the Wampanoag tribe and if I've pronounced that name correctly produced a successful first harvest and had a great feast to celebrate it. This tradition then has carried on and was formally recognised as a national feast day in America by Abraham Lincoln and has been celebrated pretty much ever since. That, as far as I'm aware, is the bare bones of it. But Let's take a little bit of a deeper dive because basically Thanksgiving is where a group of people come together in their family units generally and have a celebratory feast together. The elements around this gathering together and having large feasts really echo and have great correlations with British paganism and the harvest home. The Pilgrim Fathers, when they left these British shores for America, would have taken their daily customs with them. And the biggest, biggest event in the whole of the agricultural year is the harvest. And a safe and plentiful harvest was longed and hoped for. It was a huge deal. And let's face it, it still is, because if we don't harvest properly, we're not going to eat. So the Harvest Home Festival has been celebrated by pagans, Christians, Jews, um, any other religion that you can think of in between, because it was such a huge deal to all of us. The Harvest Home is essentially where the last sheaf of corn or barley or whatever your crop was, is brought into the barn and safely stored away. And this is a cause for huge amounts of rejoicing. And at the end of this time of harvesting, a feast was held, including all of the surrounding country folk, their neighbours and whoever else is around. This is called the Harvest Home and this Harvest Home in the UK tended to be formalised and celebrated on Michaelmas which is the 29th of September where a goose stuffed with apples was roasted and everyone would feast, then sing, drink wine, have a party and it was a bit of a knees up and a bender. There was a lot of pagan traditions and depending on where you were in the country, these varied enormously. I think I'll, I'll put a video up here for you, should you want to delve a bit deeper into that. In the earliest pagan forms of these festivals, there's a lot of blood rites that happened and sacrifice. It was known to be a time for human sacrifice and to uh, counter any devils or hexes that happened to be in the area. As we grew as a society, this became more formalised into a more joyous and celebratory occasion and still today is regarded as such. So one would imagine that when the Pilgrim Fathers alighted, having sailed across the pond in the Mayflower and set up camp in wherever it was, near the Wampanoag tribe somewhere, forgive me, I don't know, they would have bought their customs with them. You know, why not? You don't stop celebrating Christmas just because you've moved house. So they would have bought a celebration of the Harvest Festival with them and those traditions. One of which was Harvest Supper was celebrated with roast goose. Cattle and pigs and sheep need a couple more months to grow on, but the goose is ready now. And so it was always a bird that we had. Now, so when the Pilgrim Fathers obviously went over and they said, oh, yes, yeah, I think, we should, I think we'd like a bit of a Harvest Home Supper. They didn't obviously have necessarily a couple of geese lying around because they possibly all died or been eaten. But there were plenty of wild turkeys. The Wampanoam would have obviously introduced them to them and said that, you know, it's a good eating, delicious wild turkey. And why not? They are delicious. And also feed a crowd. Now, of course, with your wild turkey, you carve it and what do you lovely American folk do? You take the wishbone and then, since it depends on the family occasion, the two youngest will pull the wishbone apart and whoever gets the largest will make a wish. Now, if that's not pagan, I don't know what is. 
This tradition of breaking a wishbone is actually a lot older than you probably realised and goes back to the Etruscan civilization, who were an ancient Italian, so Southern European nation who lived many years BCE. So we're talking 600 to 1,000. They considered the wishbones could tell the fortunes of a person. You would leave them to dry in the sun and they'd stroke them and wish upon them. They were used for divination and were magical objects that could be used to predict the weather. I don't actually know how they could predict the weather and how they it was divined so, but apparently that is what they believed. After the Etruscans, of course, came the Romans who adopted this particular um, love of the wishbone. And in fact, instead of touching it and leaving it in the sun to make their wish, they thought over it. Two men would grab hold of it and break it. And whoever got the largest piece of the wishbone was the one who could make that wish. So the English nation then acquired this custom when it was conquered by the Romans who brought it with them. Etruscans, after all, were the early Romans. They called the wishbone a merry thought. Merry thought, the wishbone. Isn't that charming? Because you got a wish or a merry thought from it. So you thought this was an American staple tradition. It's believed to have been carried out for over 3,000 years. One of the centrepieces of the Thanksgiving table is the cornucopia, the horn of plenty. And I think I've actually made a video about this, which I'll put up here. There's definitely quite a lot of cornucopia in that video so that you can learn about further about the traditions. But the cornucopia is literally taken from the old pagan traditions of the Europeans. It is a beautiful tradition, though, because it does signify the abundance and the thanks and the joy of the season with the beautiful gourds and grains and stunning fruits that are full out of your cornucopia. And this is synonymous with an American Thanksgiving table. It does mean that you're going to have great luck throughout the next year. It very much seems to me that different parts of America seem to have different styles of feast. Somebody wrote to me about beans with mushroom soup and onions on the top, dried onions on the top. I've, I've never heard of anything like that before. I did enjoy reading about everyone's traditional different foods that they have at their feast. However, it did seem that one thing was always included and that was pumpkin pie. Now, I have a theory about pumpkin pie because, of course, the pumpkin is a North American gourd. We have tiny little turnips or mangle wurzels, which is this rather disgusting sort of cattle food, which we would turn into jack-o'-lanterns for Samhain or Halloween. Americans, obviously, took the pumpkin, the pompion, which is from the French pompon, because it doesn't look like a big fat pompon. They would have carved them up for a sowin. And then what are they going to do apart from use the insides of the pumpkin and make a pie? Obviously, they have to put a load of molasses with it and other such deliciousness, because pumpkin, in my opinion, is revolting. I mean, Butternut squash I can eat all day till the cows come home. But those horrible orange pumpkins that you make into jack-o'-lanterns, you really have to try to make them taste halfway decent, in my opinion. All recipes are gratefully received to making them taste the modicum better than they actually do. So pumpkin pie, I reckon, is such a traditional part of the Thanksgiving feast because it came from when they carved the pumpkins for Samhain into jack-o'-lanterns. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. What do you think? But it does make sense, doesn't it? And as part of a pagan Thanksgiving, having a pumpkin pie is definitely one of the major events. And finally, for a pagan Thanksgiving, if you happen to be in the state of Alabama, you are most likely to have come across a deviled egg as part of your Thanksgiving feast. Now, deviled eggs are eggs which have been mixed with spices, i.e. devilish stuff, and, you know, served as an hors d'oeuvre. This is taken directly from the Romans who used to stuff full their guests with deviled eggs in order to fill them up before they gave them the wine. Tea, it was an easy way to get your guests to not drink too much wine by giving them lots of eggs to start with. They even called this to fill with eggs, but in Latin, obviously not English. They've used it as a form of appetite suppressant. Maybe that's what you're doing in Alabama. I wanted to mention deviled eggs here because they are quite old-fashioned, aren't they? But it's got nothing to do with the devil and 
everything to do with spiciness, you know, devilish, diavolo. If you think of pizzas from Italy, diavolo, they're always hot. And that is what devilish means. If you bring all of these traditions together, you would be looking at a pretty pagan Thanksgiving. I love the thought of all the women together preparing the individual dishes for Thanksgiving and putting their blessings into it. That pretty much sums up any feast that I have, as this is pure kitchen magic. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget, my Patreon shop is up and running. Go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall for the details. You can also sign up there to become a coven member. My other tiers are sold out because there's only one Ginny to go round. You can go on a waiting list though. Just email me and I'll put you on it. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I really need the subscribers to help me keep going. And I will see you in a few days. Thank you.